Good morning. Happy Saturday. Move over. It annoys me when it's not centered. I can tell. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It is Saturday. And that means it is day seven of beef butter, bacon and egg 2.0. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives through the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you can find all the different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time I have to go to the store today, you'll be alerted to it. It is Saturday morning, we're having our coffee, and I just forgot to start your espresso. Oh, thank you. So we're having our coffee experience this morning it's a little late we we slept in we slept a little in bit late. we didn't get out of bed until like almost nine o'clock i'm not even going to apologize for it sometimes you just need it that is just really really weird for us but it was enjoyable to to sleep in a little late i had a rough sleep because um i pulled a shoulder muscle yesterday trying to lift something up very quickly and just goofing around and yeah. I, I lifted up and I felt pop and I was like oh and I know it's just like I pulled a muscle that's when it annoys you the most though when you knew it was just kind of like stupid play and you could have avoided it oh I know it I, happens and I, and I had to go when as I was getting ready to do it Rachel's like you're gonna hurt yourself I'm like no I'm not so I had to go to her later on in the day I'm like I need you to do me a favor and I do not want to hear I told you so can you please pray for my shoulder? Because it hurts. <laughs> Which, man, I'm sorry. I don't like to be right when it comes to you getting hurt. But, uh, yeah, so I had a little bit of a rough sleep because if I, like, lift my arm up, I feel the muscle in here, like, pulling, and it hurts a little bit. So I was, like, trying to get just right. Uh, but overall, uh, I had a sound sleep. I'm glad for that. I'm also glad I didn't hear the scale beep, which means nope. you didn't get on it this morning because sleep can affect you. Yeah. When you have a bad night's sleep, you can be doing everything right eating wise and yet it's going to register on the scale and you'll be very frustrated thinking, what did I do wrong now? Not get enough sleep. Yeah. And that brings me to a good point that... You know, a lot of times we get comments from people like, I'm doing beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, and I'm not noticing a difference. Or the scale is going up. Well, first of all, please stay off the scale. Right. Don't follow me. Like, don't, like, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Is that a good one? <laughs> follow Rachel in this one instance. Right. That I have not getting, I'm not getting on the scale. Now, you don't want to get on the scale because there could be other changes going on. And if you're really sticking to beef, butter, bacon, and egg, and even if you're using a little bit of keto chow, you should have results. But there's so many things that can affect the scale, one of them being sleep. Sleep is really important, and I think it's the thing that over the last few years has affected me the most because there's lots of times where I would only get three or four hours sleep. And I've said this in the past, but I know how my body works, and there have been days where if I only got three or four hours sleep, I would step on the scale and almost every single time the scale was either even or up, but I can eat the same exact thing. Yep. And then the next morning, if I had say seven hours worth of sleep, I, the scale would be down. Well, you're not living a one dimensional life. It right. was, I would love to be able to only focus on food Mm -hmm. and making those choices and not have any extenuating circumstances of stressors coming into our life. I think obviously you'd be super, you know, successful if it was just tunnel vision. But I've noticed you better not get in this on the scale the next day after you have a tough day at work. Yep. You shouldn't get on the scale if you're going through something stressful relationship wise. It all affects what's going on numbers wise on the scale. 
all that we're doing by eating correctly is helping one side be something that we can count on, mm -hmm. right? Which is the food we're putting into our body. And another thing that could be affecting, you know, your weight or maybe bloat, because I've seen some comments from people like, I'm eating properly, I'm not exceeding my fat, I'm not exceeding my protein, which is okay if you exceed your protein, yeah. uh, but uh, I still feel bloated. Some of that could also be your electrolytes. Right. So electrolytes are super important, and if you have an electrolyte imbalance, in my experience, remember, not doctors or nurses or health professionals or anything like that, but in my experience and from everything that I have read and studied, having like a low electrolyte or even if you have like really high salt intake, like exceedingly high salt intake, like 6,000, 7,000 milligrams of sodium, and then you're not consuming any kind of water or anything like that, that could all lead to some bloat. And the second you get your electrolytes in balance, all of a sudden you have this huge whoosh. Yeah, because you don't have to be a cactus for yourself. It yeah. doesn't have to hold on to every single bit of salt and moisture that it has, which yeah. is what we want, right? Yeah. We wanted to let go of everything. And Dr. Cywis did a great video about how, you know, water chases salt. So if your electrolytes are low, your body is gonna hold on to the sodium because it needs the sodium. And so what happens? Water chases the salt and you can get some bloat there. On the other side, if you consume way too much sodium and you're not drinking enough water, you could also have the same thing. So it's having that right balance. Now we don't believe in the, you have to drink, you know. Your weight. Your weight and ha half of your weight in ounces of water because there's water in your food and everything else. Yeah. But you do need to be, you're like having some liquids come in through water and coffee, by the way, is water. So yeah. it, it's not like it has to be just plain water. The coffee counts, but you have to be bringing in some fluids. Do you want your espresso? Do I want my espresso? What what do we think? Yes. After a, a million times in a row, yes. I'm I'm thinking yes, we want it. That Double shot amazing. of Thank you. iced Legro out of the Nespresso machine. So it smells so amazing. Can I have a little sip? Yes, you can. And mm. the <gasps> oh, okay. We're leaving that in. <laughs> like, that do you see how good. my pro is like? I don't even know how to respond to it. And, <laughs> And probably I just lost these jean shorts forever because no, they'll they'll is, wash out. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Anybody know how to get coffee out of pants? Cause oh, um, it's all over your arm. Oh, awesome. There you go. Okay. <laughs> it's a, it's a morning, it, right? Hey, just you you see the calling. good, you see the bad. You have Tabitha squeaking with her toy over there. Back to life over here. Tabitha, can you please stop? Don't give me that look. She's like, wait, what? 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 Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very Thanks. much. So I do have to go to Hobby Lobby this morning because mm -hmm. I need to buy a bunch of uh, craft templates for some upcoming crafts. Okay. So I have to go to Bed Bath & Beyond and pick something up. Then I need to go to Whole Foods to uh, return an Amazon purchase. I love when you go to return something on Amazon and it gives you the option drop off at Whole Foods. Yeah. It's so much better than having to go to the UPS store because we had like a UPS carrier near us where you could drop off and pick up stuff. It was like in a dry cleaners and he no longer does that. I know, we were so sad because he was really close. He was within walking distance. Yeah. So sometimes I would just bike over there. And now there's like no close by UPS drop off. And plus when you when you do a drop off at Whole Foods, you can also do it sometimes at Kohl's. Um, when you do it at Whole Foods, you get your money back like right away. I like that. It's not like you have to wait a week or two weeks to get your money back. You also need to return the bras that didn't work to Victoria's Secret. Oh, I Secrets forgot about that. Because so. they're, you know, they're not free. We want our money back from there and they're impossible to get on. So I went to Whole Foods and made all my Amazon returns. And while I was in there, I walked around to see if there's anything on sale. Uh, Whole Foods can be very expensive, but if you're an Amazon Prime member, they have some really good deals. They'll have some Prime member only deals, which usually have like a blue ticket. And then also if something is on sale, if you're a Prime member, you get an additional 10% off. And they have really good deals on meats, eggs, bacon, heavy cream, so cheeses. So the best thing to do is like walk around and what we do is we only buy something that's on sale. A lot of times you'll find like really good Prime member only deals on their meat. 
Uh, today, I found some of these Vital Farms hard-boiled eggs. They were on sale for $2.70 if you're a Prime member, which to me is a really good deal because if we go to Publix, I think Vital Farm eggs are up to like $6.99 a dozen. And, you know, when you have to take that and then go home and, you know, hard boil them or put them in your pressure cooker and then peel them, that could be a pain. So I like having some of these around. Also, if you're on the road and you're a little hungry, this is a great grab and go option. And I'm a little hungry, so I think I'm gonna eat one of them. And whenever I travel, I always have one of my little travel vials of, you know, of Redmond Real Salt. So I can just take one of these eggs, pour a little bit of salt on them and eat as I drive. So I got back from Hobby Lobby. I found all of the craft materials that I needed. I also got some new yarn because I wanted to make new hats for Joe and I for going to Universal Studios. He needs a Slytherin hat since he's Slytherin. And I also stopped at the thrift store. I cannot wait to show you what I got at the thrift store because they had their boutique blouses, like their fancy blouses that are normally $5 a piece. Like, oh my gosh, a $5 shirt. Um, but there were 75% off. So I got all of the shirts for $1.25 and I got a bunch of things and didn't even spend $10. So I'm excited about that. And I came home to some boiled eggs that Joe brought home and I'm totally gonna take a couple of these out of this pouch and eat them with some mustard. So I'm excited for the fashion show for all your new stuff, Yay! but what is going on with your upper lip? Oh my gosh. So this is something they do not tell you when you go on keto and start prioritizing protein, especially beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, your hair starts to grow but not just on your head where you want it, also mustache hair. So this is a fresh waxing my mustache. Tabitha, where are you going? No, leave it. Leave it. Good job. Can you please explain this? And by this, I mean this. Well, thanks to our friend, Chris. Thanks, Chris. I went down a rabbit hole. All right. So we love the soda stream. But it can be expensive because to do the exchange of those cylinders, uh -huh. it's $15, mm -hmm. which is a lot cheaper than buying, you know, cans of seltzer water or Topo Chico, which we've talked about. But when you consider I probably drink three of those liters a day, that means I'm going to probably go through like two of those refill things a month. So that's $30 right there. Okay. So Chris mentioned doing the mods. Is this a mod? Sort of. So I started doing some investigating and- It ended, your investigating ended with this needs to live on our counter? Well, sort of. I, I, I'm gonna do some extra mods. Don't worry about that. Uh, so I got the old style soda machine, which is where you have to screw in the, the, so the CO2 canister in the back. Because yeah. you can't do it on the new one. The new one is just kind of like a quick connect, put it in and stuff. So I got the old one and I found it like on super duper clearance, 30 bucks. So that compared to the other one, which is like normally $99 if you don't use a coupon, $30. Then I went to a beer store and I got a brand new five pound CO2 canister. Wow. This is brand, this is a food You did one. no drinking though. This no, sounds like no. a drinking decision. No, I, did, I got this. This is a food grade one. Some people use paintball canisters, but they're not cleaned inside. This is a food grade brand new. Okay. And I paid 50 bucks for this. So Are you going to bedazzle it? No, I'm still less than buying a soda stream. And then you can go on Amazon and buy a hose adapter kit. I can't believe where this is and going. And now you're going to have a hose that goes from this to this. Okay, and here's the thing. So the soda stream canister holds 14 ounces, so mm -hmm. not even a pound. Yeah. This holds five pounds. So this is the equivalent of like almost six of those soda stream canisters. And then once this is empty, you can just go refill it. Oh, good. And it's only $15 to refill this. So what a bargain. $15 is a, for six of those as uh -huh. opposed to one of them. But 
yes, I will have to find some place to like reside this. Uh huh. I may put it like down here on the floor and run the hose behind the oven. Oh wow. Or the other solution is put it up in the cabinet and drill a hole in the bottom of the cabinet so the hose can come up and then you won't see this. But I'm saving money. It's all about saving money. It's three o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and start our flank steak. Now today we're going to make it in an oven under a broiler. So I have my flank steak here. I took it out of the refrigerator. We're gonna let it come up to room temperature for about a half hour or so. While we're waiting for our flank steak to come up to room temperature, we're gonna go ahead and start our broiler to get it warmed up. We're gonna hit broil, high, start. So we changed our plans. Rachel didn't wanna eat before the supporter live stream. I had a couple boiled eggs. But also we wanna enjoy our food and we were gonna have like 30 minutes to eat. So now it's about 6.30. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the broiler. Did you and see? What? My first $1.25 shirt. Oh, I like that. So while we're preheating the oven, we'll go ahead and show you what Rachel bought. All right, this is number two. Just plain, but nice. I like that. I like different necklines. I like how how I have a friend to like different. She's walking the runway with you. She is, she's, she's much cuter. How much was that top? 125. All right, this one is an express shirt. For a dollar, I thought it would be nice to have just kind of like a button down. I don't wear a lot of button downs, but it's kind of nice and the material is like nice and soft and it rinses out well and you don't have to iron it because that is a huge key for me. I don't want anything I have to iron. So how much was that shirt? One twenty-five. A dollar twenty-five for a shirt at Express. Have you ever gone into Express? Their <laughs> shirts, even when they're like 50% off, they're still too expensive. Okay, I thought this one would be fun for Valentine's Day. For only a dollar twenty-five, I'm pretty excited about it. I really like. I like the neckline it's on that one. It's got a different type of neckline, and the lady at the thrift store said that this is the time of year to go to a thrift store because everybody gets rid of their old clothes in January. It's kind of like out with the old, in with the new, and so there's just so much stuff at the thrift stores that they gotta get rid of it, and so they just deep discount it. Speaking of getting rid of clothes, that's my project for tomorrow, is go through my closet and get rid of all the stuff that's too big on me. I like it. You notice that Tabitha only wants to be busy when you come out? Like, Absolutely. she lays on the couch, it's completely quiet. Now it's like, no, let me go take oh. a drink. Yeah. This one was only 75 cents. And I'm always in the mood for a new Disney shirt. And for less than a dollar, I was pretty excited. I bet you that shirt's like 40 bucks inside of Disney World. Yeah, because it's actually from Disney World. This one I purchased in preparation for the Tampa RV show because last year we went and it was freezing cold. So I needed more sweatshirts and I thought this was a cute one. This one was fun, even though it's kind of big, because we do a lot of patriotic stuff throughout the year. So I'm always looking for something that's got more like red, white, blue flag stars on it. Cause yeah, we like it. And last but not least is this little sweater, which I thought was just fun. Definitely a different shape than I usually would purchase, but it was $1.25, so we'll give it a try. And a lot of times people don't even see me for, except for from the waist up, and I thought it would have like fun sleeves. So here is my receipt. I got all nine shirts for $9.63. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm sorry, seven shirts, but $9.63 I think is a pretty good deal. I like the fact that you had a runway assistant as you were coming out on the last Isn't one. Isn't she the best? Come back to me. Let's let's turn around. There you go. Very good. Can you sit right here? Can you sit right here? Good. Okay. Look at the camera. You're looking so beautiful today. Look over here. Okay, sit. <laughs> sit. All right, good job. I love it. We've been working so much of her keeping eye contact with me that like if she has a hard time turning around and but we'll get it. We will totally get it. You're doing a great absolutely great i'm very proud of you I'm very proud of you so the broiler is up to temperature so we're going to go ahead and put the flying steak in the oven but a couple of things to note i'm going to leave it on this cooling rack so that some air can get below it also i sprayed it with some avocado oil to help release it 
Uh, the other thing you want to make sure you pay attention to is the grain and which way it runs. So on this flank steak, the grain is running this way because when we slice it, you want to cut against the grain. Now, if you happen to have one that's completely square or you're worried you're not going to remember which way the grain is, what you can do is cut off a little piece. So this one actually has this. So I know that this is the way I'm going to cut it. But if this was completely square and didn't have this little cutout, what I will normally do is make a little angle cut across the bottom. And this way I know that I want to cut it that way. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this under the broiler. We're gonna go six minutes on each side. So we've got the broiler on. We've moved our rack up to the top. You wanna to be nice and close to the broiler. We're gonna go ahead and put it in there. And then we're going to not close the door all the way. You wanna leave it about like that. Okay, so the timer is done. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull this out of the oven. And what we're gonna do is flip this roast over or flank steak over, and we're gonna put it back in the oven for another six minutes. Now, one thing to note, I did have to lower my rack a little bit. You wanna have about that much room between the broiler and your meat. Uh, originally, I put it on that upper rack, but I forgot how close this is because this is a smaller oven. This is a double oven, so this top one is a lot smaller. So now we're gonna go ahead another six minutes and also make sure you don't close your broiler all the way. Okay, the six minute timer is up. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. Now, if you're curious what I'm doing here, I'm making some homemade ghee, but that's gonna come in another video. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the oven, pull this out, and we're gonna check the internal temperature at a thick point. And what I'm looking for is an internal temperature of about 132 degrees or so. And it uh, looks like we're right there, 131 degrees. We're gonna pull this out and let it rest for about 10 minutes. Now, while that's resting, I'm gonna go ahead and start the electric blackstone and make a couple of eggs. Okay, so we've been waiting for about 10 minutes. The roast is completely rested. I have a couple of eggs cooked over there. We're gonna go ahead and slice this thing up. Go ahead and slice it over here. I always like to slice it at an angle. I feel like you get a nice piece that way. Oh, yeah. And you can look over here and look at that. That is a perfect medium rare right there. Are you stealing a piece? I am a terrible thief if you're watching me do it. Mmm. Oh, yeah. That is delicious, very flavorful. You have a nice piece on your lip there. There you go. Hasn't anybody ever told you you're supposed to taste the food first? <laughs> well, I know what a fried egg tastes like, yeah, I would hope. But you're insulting the chef. What if I so perfectly sorry. salted it already for you? I am so sorry, chef. Okay, here's dinner. We've got flank steak and eggs. Um, the only other thing I had today was an egg and then we had our coffee this morning. I had... Two boiled eggs. Two boiled eggs. So microwave is telling me my butter for our creamies are done. <laughs> uh, so this entire flank steak was about two and a half pounds. We don't have everything on our plate. There's a few slices left over. We may or may not eat it. I feel like back to Dr. Sivas's whole sequential yeah. eating. Eat what's on your plate. If you want more, it's over there. Just go get it. But I'm surprised at how many times where we eat what's on our plate and we're like, I'm full, I don't need any more. And then we can just put it into the refrigerator. And this is something great that would go with like eggs for breakfast the next day. Absolutely, we've got big eyes and smaller stomachs than we anticipate. Yeah, and a couple things about flank steak. Flank steak is very lean. So the best way to cook it is like hot and fast. So I put it on a grill and then like either on a cast iron, but I don't have any cast iron big enough for a full flank steak. Um, most people cook it on a grill. You could cook it on the Blackstone. Or now, you know how you can do it under a broiler if you don't have a blackstone or a big cast iron or a grill or anything like that. Uh, also, because it's so lean, you may want to top it with a little bit of butter if you're not getting any other fat. Now, we've had butter in our coffee today. We've got some eggs, and there's so much flavor in here. I don't think that I really need anything else on top of it. It's perfect. Uh, one thing I didn't, I didn't know what you thought about it. Did you taste another piece yet? But uh -huh. when I prepared it last night, 
I rubbed the entire thing with mustard. Oh, wow. So, you know, between the mustard and the Redmond salt and the organic garlic and pepper. It's got a wonderful helps. crust. It, it gives you the crust, but it also tenderizes it mm -hmm. because that is something that you can have, you know, when it comes to flank steak, if you overcook it, it could definitely be kind of chewy. So when it makes, when you're making flank steak, you definitely don't want to overcook it. You really don't want to go more than like medium or it may be a little bit too chewy for you. This is just right. Well, clearly, I didn't like that a bit. <sighs> Flank steak is so good, but that's another meat that we never really ate before beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. No, you discover so much when you try something new and you have a challenge like this. And flank steak is affordable enough that everybody in the house can have some. Yeah, I mean, it's not as cheap as ground beef, but it's not the same price as a New York strip or buying a ribeye. I mean, locally for us, we can get flank steak for somewhere around 7 to $8 a pound. Now, we happen to have a couple from, you know, buying our cow, but it is definitely something that I would buy more of. I think it makes a really good meal. It defrosts really quick. And it cooks really quick. Well, sometimes it's nice to have a steak, even when it's not your birthday or your anniversary. Right. So uh, overall, I love the flank steak. Making the broiler is nice and easy. And the other thing about doing it that way is you're not smoking up your house. So if you do have a cast iron pan big enough to cook it on, like on top of your stove, you are risking like smoking up the house. And that's something that I try not to do. There is a smoke alarm right here. So usually anytime I do something like that, I have to like disconnect it. That's why most people do do it on a grill outside because you want to put it on a really hot grill. But six minutes on each side for a two and a half pound flank steak was perfect. I mean, it was like a good medium rare. It had that outer ring and then the inside was a nice rare, just the way Rachel likes it. Not too chewy. It wasn't like, you know, you were chewing and chewing and chewing. I, I thought it was delicious. And one of the things about the flank steak is, is generally you don't have a nice even cut of meat. There's usually like a middle section that's much higher. So if you're like us, where Rachel likes it medium rare, almost rare, and I like it medium rare to medium, you get that through the whole flank steak. So I kind of get like the the two end sides and she gets the middle and it's good for both of us. Well, that's gonna be today's vlog. I know it was a little bit shorter of a vlog, but it's just a one day one. Some people are probably like, yay, yay, yay and not a 35, 40 minute vlog. But <laughs> uh, so tomorrow Sunday, we won't be vlogging. We'll pick back up with our vlogging on Monday. As we've said in the past, we're taking Sundays as a Sabbath day to relax and, and just enjoy each other after church. Uh, so uh, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we make a happy plate, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.